Amen. I'm going to begin something uh, over the next, uh, probably next eight weeks about vision. Somebody say vision. vision. And we're going to be declaring these as vision Sundays over the next eight weeks through the, all the way through the end of November. To talking about vision and how important and significant vision is. I don't know if anybody ever had eye trouble. Anybody here ever eye trouble? Eye trouble, eye trouble. Uh, and then you get some glasses or maybe you didn't realize you had eye problems or difficulty in seeing or reading and maybe because of age or whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden you get some glasses, you get something to help things be clear, things to come into focus, into reality. Vision is so important and critical for the believer not just the believer, vision is so important for the child of God. Vision is so important, not just for Christians and for those that are born again, but it's also important even in society that you have a clear way forward. In everyday life that we have, we have to have vision. Vision is significant. If vision was not important, God would have never gave you two eyes. Amen. He had to put your ears. If hearing was the only thing, he had to put your ears in front of where your eyes are. But God give us eyes so we can see. And it's important that we see correctly. It's important that our vision be clear. In Proverbs, if you have your Bible, Proverbs chapter 28. Somebody say Proverbs 28. In verse, I mean, not 28, Proverbs 29. I'm sorry about that. 29. In verse 18 says, where there is no vision, people perish. Can we say that out loud together? Where there is no vision, people perish. The ESV version, since they put it up there for me, it says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law or keeps the vision. He says, where there is no prophetic vision in the English Standard Version, the ESV, the King James says, where there is no vision, people perish. Another translation says, where there is no vision, people walk naked. In other words, it, it, it depicts what happens when there is no vision, that people lack, people live in less there's things missing because this the simple lack of vision. When I was away this past week and I was having some time in prayer and God began to download some things to me and he took me to that where we just had up there, the ESV version where it says where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint or they run wild. They're crazy. Somebody say they're cray cray. They're crazy. They're, they're, they, they have no idea. They have no aim. They have no purpose. We know, according to the Bible, a prophetic word or prophecy is always based on Scripture of God foretelling yet things he's going to do. Prophetic and prophecy in the Bible means God proclaiming what he's going to do in my life. God's word is Full of prophecy. Almost every word in the Bible is prophetic in a sense because it declares that when the Bible says God told Abraham, said, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make you a blessing. He was telling Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing. He was prophesying to Abraham, said, Abraham, if you will get out of where you are, that stinking thinking, get out of that mentality, get out of seeing things the way you've always seen it and go to the place that I have prepared for you. He said, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing. It's all prophetic. It's all prophetic. Jesus said that he came, John 16, John 10, 10 says, I've come to give you life and it more abundantly. Somebody say more, more. abundantly. He, he didn't just come to give me life. He said, I come to give you life and it more abundantly. Amen. He says, now the thief, on the other hand, he's come to steal, to kill, and destroy. He's even prophesying that it is the enemy that's coming to steal, 
to kill and destroy. But Jesus says, but I've come that you have life and you have the kind of life that is full of an abundance. It is filled to overflowing. All of the Bible is prophetic in a sense because it's making declarations of yet future things that you can walk in and that you could have. And I gotta make sure that if my vision is not clear, if I'm not seeing beyond my now, seeing into another day, seeing in the realm of possibilities, seeing in the realm of what God is still able to do, I can allow what's either going on in my life, my family, my circumstance, to get my eyes dim, to get me confused, to get me frustrated, to get me delusional, to get me running wild. And because I'm, all I'm seeing is the negative. You know, if you only look at the bad report long enough, you'll start talking about that report. You'll start believing that report. But the Bible says we believe the report of the Lord. Come on, somebody say the report of the Lord. And God's report is always good. God's report is always great. God's report is always amazing because he's the God that didn't just do it before. He's the God that does it again and again and again. So all of us today, no matter what stage or area in our life we're at, if I make sure I have a prophetic vision, not just a vision, because I have a choice to either see things the way they are and let the way it is depict to me the way it's going to be. Or I can say, God, I want to have a prophetic vision. I don't want to let what I see in this natural realm be deciding my future realm. I'm going to let what I can't see in my natural realm be decided by what you say. See, the problem with a lot of us sometimes is we only say what we see instead of begin to see what we say. In Genesis chapter one, the Bible says, in the very beginning, the earth was without form. Chaos and darkness was on the face of the earth. And God said, let there be light. And then he saw the light and divided it. In other words, God first saw darkness, but he didn't say, oh, it's dark. What am I going to do with all this darkness? God saw darkness, but he said, let there be light. Do you know there's power in your words? There's power in what we say, especially when we line up to the word of God, to God's word, amen. So I, I have to make sure that I'm seeing correctly. And how that brings us into these vision Sundays for Destiny World Outreach Center is there's four things we're going to cover extensively to accomplish us It is a unified body of our purpose and why we exist as a church and exist as people here together. Members particularly partnering together, unifying together for common goals and things that we're believing God to do in our city, but first in our own life, and our own families. Number one, we're believing here at Destiny World Outreach Center that people know God. I've got four things on the screen that people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Four simple things that over these next couple of weeks we're gonna dive into to help us get this vision clear in front of us. Because if we don't have this prophetic vision of yet what we're believing God to do, we know what God has done, but we're still believing God to do it again and again and again. Somebody say again and again and again. And number one, is we want to help people know God. You know, you and I live in a society today that it is so sad to be a part of and to be exposed to that we live in a society today that is self-centered. We live in a society today that 
people are today, the average person, statistics have been said that the average person today is on a search to find themselves. Probably five out of 10 that you come in contact with on a daily basis is their primary search in life is to find themselves. And it's being encouraged in our school system, not in our school system, but in early child learning is the importance of finding yourself, discovering you. You know, the problem is every time I focused on me, I was unhappy. <laughs> every time I began to look at me and my abilities and my good, my bad, my ugly, I was unhappy. See, God didn't create us here and put us in this earth to find ourselves. He created us and put us here to find him. God put you and I in this world not to know ourselves, like know me. I'm not trying to find Chad. I need to find God because God is my creator. He, is the, he created the heavens and the earth and everything in and on the earth. I've been created in his image and after his likeness. I, See, the problem we could have in society is people are being encouraged to find themselves instead of find God. In other words, I don't have a problem being in search to find who I came from, but I need to know more importantly who created me. My family, my mom was a vehicle God used to get me here. But he is my creator. He's the father of all fathers. He's the parent of all parents. He's the God of any God. There is no God like our God. Amen. But the key is, is to help people know God. You gotta know him. God don't want us to know about him. God wants us to know him. Somebody say, know God. It's important to know God because if we're not careful, we only get around culture and we let the culture we're in start discovering our purpose and our ability because God don't want me to know me. He wants me to know him because if you get to know God and he is your creator and you understand him that at he is your creator he created you in his image and in his likeness, then the more I know God, the more I find me. The more I find my purpose, the more I find out about me because I go back to the originator, the original where I came from and the pursuit needs to be after him and to know him and his power and his resurrection. People in society today are more trying to find their purpose instead of why they were created. They want to know what it is that's going to make me great instead of the gifter that created me and given me a purpose in this world. So our focus is that we want to help people to get into a relationship with God. You know, a relationship has to have two parties active together for any good to come out of it. For anything to come out of any relationship, there has to be two parties working together to form a relationship so that there could be a relationship. The Bible says, how can any two walk together unless they agree? You know, the only way I'm gonna be good to my wife is if I'm first understanding my creator and I'm getting to know God and why he brought me into this world to discover my purpose and my gifts and my abilities that God put in me and thought enough of me to bring me into this world because if I don't get to know him and get to know why and get to fall in love with him and have this relationship going right, I'll never have these relationships going right. We've talked about it before that God wants the cross, this relationship, more than this relationship. Once I get this one right, these would be so much smoother in life. But if I'm focused on all these relationships, this one's going to be hindered. No, God. Ways that we 
know God. We know God through his word. His, his word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How I know God is I know him through his word. Amen. You know, people will know you according to your word. Either your word's good or your word's bad. Either your word means something or your word means nothing. That's how people get to know you. And the Bible says God and his word are one. They're the same. It's unchanging. It, it, it's always conducive and fits in every situation. It's not, well, you know what? I know God used to do that, but I don't know if God still does that. No, God and his word are one. It, it does not change. It's not conditional based on my circumstance. Amen. And the Bible says it's yes and amen. Secondly, we want to help people at destiny find freedom. Not temporary relief. Not just forgiveness of where they come from. Freedom. To know him is to know freedom. Jesus said who the son is free indeed. Not just to pass, not just get through life, not just get by, not just get out of trouble, get out of jail card. No, no. Find freedom that once you come to know him and the power of his resurrection, who the son sets free is free indeed. The third thing is we want to help people discover purpose. Discover purpose. This life, it's worth living. And it's not worth dragging through life, but it's worth living. It is a life that Jesus came to give us that we have life, but not just life, but we have an abundant life. That word life means a zoe, the God kind of life. God don't want me to just have life that everybody else has. No, because once I get to know him, my life now has been moved to a whole nother level. When I get to know him, I know his purpose, his plans, his thoughts, his things that God has prepared for me, that God has prepared for you, that I find freedom, that I discover purpose. Somebody say discover purpose. Purpose is something that is a point of discovery every day that God begins to give me more and more as the relationship of knowing him. More and more every day I live pursuing my relationship with God, I discover more purpose in my life, why it's important, why I matter, why I mean something, why God put me here. But see, if it's all about self-centered, if it's all just me, if it's all just a me society that I'm just trying to discover myself, I'm just trying to get me through life, I'm just all about me, I'm forgetting about him, I'm forgetting about my creator, I'm forgetting about the one that gave me my eyes, my ears, my hands, my feet. He thought so much about me in the form of creation. He put so much significance on me, so much significance on you that he put you in this world. And you know, God didn't come up with a plan after you got here. The Bible says before you and I were ever formed in our mama's womb, God prepared a plan for you and a plan for me. He didn't wait till somebody decided to get together and you were conceived and here you are and oh, pull out file 13. No, no, no. God had a plan before anybody else thought of you, thought about you, thought of having you. He already had a plan for you. It's a meaningful plan. And number four, I can't wait to get to it, and that is about making a difference. Be a difference maker. You know, that's who I want to be in life. I want to be a difference maker. I want to be one that's making a difference in society, making a difference in people I come in contact with, making a difference in my family, making a difference with my children. Be a difference maker. Not be one that's focused on all the differences. Be, be one that raises the bar. Be one that draws a line in the sand. Be a make it happen. Be a difference maker. Be one when somebody gets in contact with you, you raise the standard. You raise the bar of what it means to make a difference for good, for the positive, to be a, to be a barrier breaker. God wants us to know him. And not just know him, but know the power 
of his resurrection. That means when I get to know God and the power of his resurrection, that when God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says he's raised us up together with him and set us in heavenly places far above principalities, powers of darkness, rulers of the air. We're not down here fighting enemies. No, we're seated in heavenly places. We got to get our vision clear. We got to know that I've been seated in Christ above principalities, powers of darkness, rulers of the air. I'm not down here trying to fight my way through. I'm up here commanding things to change, things to get better. I'm not just trying to find my way through life. God has already found me. I was lost, but I have been found and my future has been built in my maker, in my creator. So my pursuit is to discover God Show me your ways. Create in me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within me. If we're not careful, we will evolve into a me society, a me church, me individual, that everything's about me. When we started Destiny, I clearly said, I don't want it to be a me church. I want it to be a we church. We are family. We are in this together. It's not about me. It's about we. Would you say that out loud? It's not about me. It's about we. we we're family. We're the family of God. We've been called by God. We've been marked with God's favor. Amen. This worst thing that I could do is to get focused on me. What me needs, what me wants, what me don't have. Amen. Amen. You know, you can't have a relationship with another person if you're only focused about me. The only relationship you're gonna have is with yourself. And people call that crazy. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Myself. It, talking to self is not a real acceptable thing in society. People go to doctors because they're talking to them. They're hearing voices. Who are you hearing, me? God wants us to have a relationship with him. If I could ever encourage anybody that if you're going to enjoy life, the first and the most important thing is to get to know God. It's relationship. It's not religion. Many people, especially in church world, they know about God, but they don't know God. It, it amazes me that I was lost and I've been found. I, I was caught up in a debt of sin. But yet Christ, by his grace and mercy, reached down and saved me and redeemed me and delivered me out of the horrible pit. But yet, when I come across somebody that falls into a sin, falls into a shortcoming, that I can't find no grace, I can't find no mercy, all I find is judgment. I wonder, is that because I know about God, and I don't know God. Could it be based on my relationship that I felt judged, so now I judge? I felt condemned, so now I condemn. Is it, could it be that because my relationship with God has been built on condemnation versus conviction? Because if I don't know him, I'm not going to know his power. I'm not going to know his grace. I'm not going to know his mercy. Because it's through knowing him than finding out about him and entering into relationship with God that now I start knowing his attributes, his beauty, and all about God. You know, my wife made me date her for a year before she would even consider allowing me to ask her to marry me. 
Matter of fact, she wouldn't even date me. She, uh, she made me, I'm sorry, she made me be a friend for a year. I wanted to date. I was ready to get married day I laid eyes on her. I do. But she said, no, I want to be a friend, only friends. I tried to put my arm around her at a drive through She slapped it off. She said, no, I don't like you like that. I only want a friendship. True story. I was like, I ain't never met a girl like this. <laughs> so the thing of it is, is she, but what she was after is getting to know me. Not just like me, not just enjoy my company, but know me, know who I am in the good, the bad, and just as a friend before she ever wanted to enter into a long-term relationship. The amazing thing is God knew you and me before we ever were, and knew us in our darkest state, knew us in our worst days, but yet he did not pull the plug in pushing and desiring a relationship with you. The Bible says unless you and I are drawn to God, we can't come to God. That the Spirit of God is constantly drawing people to himself. And when you, you think you just come to God on your own, no. God, by his Spirit, has been dealing with you and drawing you daily since the day you were born and put in this world. His, his Spirit in love and grace and mercy was drawing you to himself. Amen. I want to know God. I just don't want to know about him. I want to know him. I just don't want to know about the Bible. I want to know the Bible because it's his word. It's his promises. As I said earlier, they're prophetic in nature. They're constantly declaring to me what God either has done or what God is still going to do. I should never lose hope if I've got a prophetic vision. I should never lose hope. I should never lose desire. I should never lose passion because every day I wake up, it's still another day he's made. He's given me another opportunity. He's still got great plans for me. Amen. Come on, somebody say, I want to know God. And see, our focus, if we could ever help people to understand the first and foremost thing God wants for us is to know him. Not just to get forgiveness, because he's already forgave you. Not just to get your name written in the Lamb's book of life and know you're going to heaven. No, God desires a relationship. That's what he was telling Abraham. Abraham, I, if you'll look up, I'm gonna bless you and I'm gonna make you a blessing. No, I'm gonna make your name great. I'm gonna give you a great nation. He began to prophesy to Abraham, Abraham, this is what I got planned for you. Now you can go your way, you can go your father's way, you can go somebody else's way, but here's why I created you. Here's the plan that I have for you. You know, God has that same plan for each and every one of us. But it happens through relationship. And I've been raised to know about God. I grew up in all of the do's, the don'ts, the rules, the regulations. And when I began to look at all of that, I saw I don't fit. That somehow God made all these rules and regulations and this rule book, and that's all I saw was this a big rule book and, and book. And every time I looked at it, I was like, I don't fit. That, that, that I must not be part of his accepted plan because I don't fit in there. I, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can be that. Am I the only one? There should have been more hands than that, but just a few of you like. But here's the key. The only way you fit is get to know your maker, is get to know God, not just know about him. I know people that can debate the scripture with you all day long. They can find a verse in the Bible to argue with you all day long, but they have zero mercy, zero grace. And I'm like, you know about the Bible, but you obviously don't know the one who wrote the Bible. Because the Bible says God is full of grace, full of mercy. In other words, truth, according to the Bible, doesn't come to condemn me, but it does come to free me. 
In other words, God's truth, people say, what people need to know the truth? Yes. But truth should not push somebody away from God. Truth should pull somebody to God. And not to just know about him, but to get into a relationship of knowing God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. No, this is the love of God. The agape, the unconditional love of God. God loves you and I unconditionally. That's the God kind of love. He loves me unconditionally. He, he doesn't put limits and boundaries on loving me. He loves me unconditionally. And the more I know God, the more I'll be able to love like God, the more I'll be able to take his attributes, his character, his commitment, and begin to put those into my life. And I begin to look like God, walk like God, talk like God. I will never be God, but I can start talking like God. I can start acting like God. I can start living like God. And the more I start talking, acting, and living like God, I become a trendsetter, a difference maker, and I start making a difference in my path, in my journey, and anybody that gets in the trail that I'm walking down, they'll start seeing the difference than they see on another trail because they'll start seeing the image of God. They'll start seeing somebody that believes in God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I want somebody that walks behind me that says if God did it for him, God could do it for me. I want people seeing, walking, if they're walking behind me and my family, that if God did it for them, God can do it for me and my house. So Joshua said, me and my house is gonna serve the Lord. In other words, I, I got to make sure my vision is clear. It's gotta be clear. And the only way I could ever understand to see correctly is I get to know God. And one way we get to know God is through worship. 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 The definition of worship means simply to be like somebody. To, to put them in such a place of position that when you say, I worship God, then you're saying, I want to be just like God. In other words, he has the tip of the spear. He's who I'm after. He's who I want to be like. He's who I worship. So I can start worshiping people because I want to be like people, or I can start trying to find me and worship me. And it's all about me. And it's all about what I want. But God's created you and I to be a worshiper of God. And through worship is how I get to know Now, some people confuse worship with what we do on Sunday mornings. Because you see them shake and dance and jerk and buck and all this stuff up here. So you think, well, that's worship. So then I, I ain't got time to shake and buck and dance. But worship is more an inward decision than it is an outward experience. You can have an outward experience, but nothing inwardly happening. You can get goosebumps run from your toes to the top of your head and not change anything inside. As soon as the goosebump is gone, you're still you. But God wants an inward, a heart change. Is this helping anybody or is it just me? Man, Desi ain't been this quiet in 18 years especially the first service. You're the ones got it going on, man. You, you're the people that know God. That's why you're at the early service. You know him so good, I gotta be the first service, first one there. But here's the thing. You know, I've discovered in months that I don't know him like I thought I knew him. Has anybody ever recently made a bad choice, said something wrong, and felt like God will never do anything again for me. Anybody other than me? Anybody recently, you, you did something wrong and then you find yourself praying, you're like, I don't know why I'm praying, he ain't listening. 
Anybody other than me? It's because your mind rel uh, related back to an incident of an outward action that you think it changed an inward result. But friend, that is so wrong about God. God knows if he can get inside me, if I can open up my heart, open up my life and let God get down in here where all the filth and the mess and the ruckus and the clutter is, get down in my heart, get him in my heart. Where's Jesus live? In my heart. Then he knows he can start working his way through my life. But if it's all out here, if it's all head knowledge, then all you'll see is problems instead of possibilities. And I found out the other day as God was saying, Chad, listen, I know, I already knew you was going to do that. I knew you was going to respond. I would have Jesus. Jesus, pray. Because if they look at him like that, this is what Chad's going to do. Start praying, Jesus. <laughs> Angels, get ready. We may have to take him. <laughs> See, we think God finds out after we do it. Oh, my God. I didn't know he was going to do that. I didn't know she was going to respond that way. He knows the very thought that has been perceived, conceived. He knows it all. And yet the Bible says God will not ever leave you. If things start happening the wrong, it could be a result of a decision. So if you want things to go from that were right, that went to wrong, find out where you've made a bad decision, correct it, and get back to doing it right, and then now you start having right things start happening in your life. But it's never because God's like, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, can't do it, can't do it. I had no idea who was doing that. I knew nothing about that. No, God already knew. But the good thing is he's given forgiveness for us. He's given opportunity for us to get up and shake the dust off from yesterday's situation and decide today, God, I want to know you more than I've ever known you before. God, I want to know you and the power of your resurrection. Our goal's got to be that we want to know God and I want to help people know God. Because just getting them to know about him it causes people to feel measured by him. And God has already measured all of us. And he's already said, you all qualify. You're all equal. You're all perfect. You're all made in my image. Now get to pursue into this relationship that it's a two-way street. It's what I want you to do and what I'm going to do for you. And God wants us to engage into a relationship with God, not just knowing about God, but start knowing God. And you know God, number one, today as I close through his word. I want you to listen to Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Somebody say Jeremiah 29, 11. The Bible says in the King James this, he says, I know the plans and the thoughts that I have towards you. They are not evil. Somebody say they are not, they are not evil, evil, but they are good, they are good. To, hope to hope of a great expectation. In other words, the Bible says God knows the plans and the thoughts that he thinks towards me and thinks towards you. And they're not bad plans. They're not bad thoughts. They're good thoughts. God constantly is thinking of your best. God is constantly thinking of what he's created. And God sees the potential in all of us to what we can be. How many parents here today? You know, no matter what your children come in and say, I don't look right, I don't know, whatever they say negative, a parent goes, no, 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 don't ever say that. A parent's always trying to get them to say the right things. Right? I mean, we're parents are always seeing better in our children. 
And God says in, in Matthew 6, says, if you know how to do it for yourself and your children, how much more do you think your heavenly father does and thinks about you? If you have good thoughts for your children, no matter what's going on, how much more does your heavenly father think about you? A few things. Maybe I have to understand that it's time to change. Not just change to be changing, but maybe it's time to change than just trying to find out about God, but decide today, God, I want to know you. Maybe our goal for the next 90 days is, God, I want to know you more today than I did yesterday. God, and then when I wake up tomorrow, God, I want to know you more than I did the day before. I want to know everything, God. Fill my heart, God. Remove the scales off my eyes. Open my ears. God, I want to start over. I want to start fresh. I want to start brand new. God, I'm going to pursue you. With all of my heart, everything about me, God, I'm going to pursue you. God, I want to know you. I want to know everything. Would you stand with me all over this room? And you'll see God do it again and again and again. Come on, all over this room, would you stand and pray with me today? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for each and every one that is here. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Father, for your grace, your mercy, your love. And God, more than anything, God, we want to build people Build a church. Build a community of believers that our first and foremost goal is knowing you. And God, we want to help people get to know you. Because if you changed us, we know you could change others. If you helped us, we know you could help others. But God, it's through that personal, individual relationship through Jesus Christ. And God, I pray over every man, woman, boy, and girl in the sound of my voice in this house that, God, our pursuit is to know you more and more and more in the name of Jesus. God, help our visions to be clear to pursue you, to know you more personally, individually. 